Okay, let's get started. Um, thank you very much for joining the Streamline Industrial Manufacturing using Laser Guided Assembly webinar. Uh, this is a, an excellent opportunity um, for anyone who's interested in learning about laser projection for manufacturing. And um, today we have uh, Majid Yukub with us, who is our automation and Vertic account manager at Measurement Solutions. And um, Majid's been with the business. I've actually lost track, Maj. How, how long have you been with us now? Um, it's over five years. Five years. There we go. Five years. Um, but Majid has a, a, a wealth of experience going back to um, manufacturing and inspection software and um, has also spent a number of years in the metrology world. So it's a real pleasure, Maj, to, to have you on the webinar, mate. Um, uh, we, we both talked about how we would structure this and I think the decision was let's make it as relaxing as possible, have a bit of a, a catch up like we have uh, over a cup of coffee and um, use the opportunity just to share about some of the really exciting projects uh, that you've been involved with yourself personally, but also some of the um, sort of mainstream applications that we're seeing with Vertec laser projection systems that are away from the norm of um, composite layup, which is traditionally what laser projection systems are, are used for. Um, for those who have joined, my, my name is Derek. I'm the UK sales manager here at uh, Measurement Solutions. But just to give you a little bit of background of who we are, if you're not familiar with the, the name, uh, we've been in the industry uh, 25 years, hence the, the wonderful confetti background to Maj's presentation there. And uh, that 25 years encompasses a lot of different um, product range within our uh, business, different, uh, very big portfolio, um, but it has been structured mainly around metrology. Um, and over the last sort of five years, we've moved into um, manufacturing, design, and also quality control uh, to uh, a higher degree than ever before. Uh, one of those products uh, that we took on was Vertec, which is one of the key players um, within the aerospace world for composite layup. And so today is an opportunity just to to catch up, as I said, Madge, talk a little bit about what you're doing with Vertec and um, and we'll go from there. If, if you have any questions um, through the webinar, feel free to use the chat function below. Um, we'll be monitoring that as we go through and there'll be time at the end just to just to have a conversation about anything that you've seen that you want more information on. Um, we'll spend a few minutes doing that as well as afterwards we can have a further catch up uh, if needs be. Madge, over to you. Kick us off, mate. That's great. Well, thank you, Derek. Uh, yeah, good morning, everyone. I appreciate your time uh, joining us uh, for this webinar this morning. Um, I think great introduction from Derek, uh, really just set the scene really. Uh, so hopefully you can see my screen clearly, but please flag up if you don't, or the videos or the pictures. Um, as I said, it, it's a sort of, I wouldn't say it's an informal discussion, but I've, I've put some slides together. I didn't want it to be too heavy PowerPoint. We've got some videos. But hopefully by the end of this webinar, you'll have an understanding of what Vertec is, the key applications and its benefits. And that's really what I want to get out of uh, this morning's meeting. So as, as Derek said, please feel free to ask any questions as we go along. Nothing's been scripted. I'm not reading off anything. <laughs> and I've kept the sort of uh, the terminology sort of low as well. So what I'm going to really like to cover briefly is, yeah, what is Vertec? Just a bit of the background of the company, the products they produce. I suppose more importantly is what are the key applications and benefits of using laser projection or laser templating, okay? And I can support that really using some applications and workflows. There's no better way to explain the benefits of a system than actually giving you an actual case study. So I've got some videos and pictures of some projects that uh, Vertec have been involved with and also ourselves here uh, in the UK as part of Measurement Solutions. One slide really on the company. <clears throat> so Vertec uh, designed a manual manufactured in Canada. Um, they actually pioneered laser projection over 37 years ago. So it's not a new system. It's a very mature technology uh, uh, used extensively within the industries that utilize laser projection. Uh, and so as you can see from those couple of images there, um, there's a lot of systems out there from Vertec, large global sales team. We're their proud exclusive partners in the UK and Ireland. Um, yeah, over 17,000 projectors worldwide um, in terms of 
the, the usage. Now, they do cover a large sort of portfolio of projection systems. Um, we're talking 2D inspection turnkey setups. They supply systems for the building industry, trusts, woodwork. So there's a large portfolio. Um, I would say visit vertexvision.com to see that. Today's webinar is really focused on the 3D projector. And that's effectively what's used predominantly in the industries we're going to be speaking about. So that's called the iris, but we'll, we'll come on to that shortly. So the focus is the 3D projector itself. It's a busy slide. Uh, the top one really covers its core industries. So as Derek's touched on already, aerospace composites, they're probably the first industry to really take this on board. I've used it for decades, and that is for composite layup. Uh, a lot in motorsport, specifically F1 as well. Prefab, I've mentioned industrial fabrication and wind uh, turbine uh, assemblies. So on the left hand side of that list, there is some key applications. Yeah, so you can start to see, get an idea of where would laser guidance be uh, typically uh, used for. The ones that I've highlighted in red uh, are probably the ones I'm going to focus on with some examples. Okay, so that's the reason for them to be uh, sort of flagged up. Uh, I'd not put them as some of the, the, the main core industries that, that we work with in the UK and abroad as well. I think probably the, the thing from that slide match that I've noticed the most is the... Um, uh, all of those particular applications or use cases there are, are very manual heavy processes aren't they they're not they're not necessarily an automated process and i think that's where vertic plays a, a significant role anything that requires some sort of manual assembly or some sort of manual marking up or whatever the case may be that's where laser projection has a has a big benefit to to anyone um assembling something as you can see in your in your video there so um yeah a key a key part of what vertic does as a as a laser system yeah no exactly good point so it's basically at the very least semi automating any manual process that needs guidance so yeah so you saw a couple of screenshots there through that video paint masking assembly but we'll we'll cover those um into the next slides in, in, terms, in terms of examples now I'm probably doing this at the start instead of at the end, but actually let's cover the reasons people adopt uh, laser guided assembly. Um, and this goes across all the technologies. These are the major benefits of why you would use literally a projector uh, straight from uh, your nominal information to, to guide the operator to assemble. And it is, most of these are quite obvious if you think about the time and costs saved straight away you are eliminating any physical templates marking out in the, in the world of composites is those very thick ply books that they typically use with images showing where each ply needs to be laid down manually um time saving there obviously but the key thing also is you're you're making it right first time you're not finding out afterwards there's an error in the build with costly rework okay so it's not just streamlining the actual process of assembly it's ensuring you don't have a very expensive rework afterwards. Uh, and overall that, yeah, it, that will improve your accuracy and quality. Okay, just touch on composites first. I mentioned it a few times really. So if, you, if you're not familiar, the, the general way composites uh, are built on tooling is the CAD system uh, will typically produce um, a design where it will it will literally design out how this mold tool needs to be laid up with composites. Okay, now in most cases, especially aerospace and motorsport, we are talking potentially hundreds of individual layers of ply built over different parts of the mold tool to ensure that the part functions correctly as designed. So, typically, without laser projection, we are looking at the guider. So. The operator using what we call a ply book and literally using images to try and understand where these plies need to go now the nature of composites it obviously has a weave direction so that also exhibits its properties as well so not only is it understanding where the ply needs to be laid down it's also which direction uh, it needs to be laid down now this whole process is effectively semi-automated the cad system will export the ply data directly into vertec uh, and Vertec will then project back the outline. I've got a little video on the next slide so you can see that working. It's not just ply layup. In the world of composites, um, in terms of manufacturing, we are looking at uh, welding or gluing brackets, features, harnessing, um, yeah, ultimately paint masking as well. So hopefully the videos will give you 
better understanding of that working. So this is a case study, uh, fly, Firefly Aerospace in the US. These are effectively uh, mole tools uh, for rockets. So you can see there where the laser will be projected. Hopefully you can see this video clearly. Um, you can see that. So the laser is being projected accurately onto the tool. A couple of things I should mention at this stage um, in terms of the system itself. I've mentioned accuracy a few times here. So the systems can be accurate down to 0.38 millimeters positional accuracy. And the system projectors, we can go up to 18 meters in distance on a single sort of projection. But I'll, I'll, I'll go through that in more detail shortly. So, I think what, yeah, what's yeah, quite interesting, that match, just so if I can jump in there, no, is, of course. is obviously you're showing scale there of, of something that's quite large. But I think, the, you know, the vertex laser projector is, is it's got such a broad spectrum in terms of volume and size. You know, you could be assembling, um, a very small composite part for a Formula One team through to paint masking an entire aeroplane. And I think that's one of the versatilities of it is being able to, and you may just cover this later on in your presentation, be able to chain link multiple cameras together. So if you go to a particularly big part, like an aircraft fuselage, you're able to link multiple systems together to get that entire encompassing projection put through. Um, the other thing that uh, being out on the road with you in the past and seeing how you use the Vertec is one of the um, uh, interesting concepts you've talked about. A lot of them, well, not even a concept, it's, it's it's how it's used, is actually having one system used for multiple tables during composite layer processes. So, you know, one system can provide laser projection for two or three tables at a time. So the, the scale up for how you adopt the technology is very, very quick. It's very easy to install, get rid of all your ply books, which are literally, I've seen ply books like yay thick of just ply after ply after ply. You're saying hundreds, you know, in F1, we've seen thousands, haven't we, of, of just pages of data. And then all you need is one ply in the wrong direction. And that part is basically structurally not going to be as sound as it what is was uh, designed for using FME, uh, design FMEA. So that's a key thing, isn't it? Being able to bring that in and reduce your scrap race rate at the end, but also it can fit so many different applications within a business. So it does. Um, yeah. But yeah, exactly. It's the way it's deployed as a single system, as an array. Uh, but yeah, I've got some slides later that will show how the system lends itself for a bit more flexibility in terms of a setup. Uh, but yeah, that's a good point, Derek. Um, uh, what we'll do now, I think it's worth me also recapping, if you're not sure, how does this system actually work? So yeah, we're looking at the next application here, uh, well fabrication. But let me touch on the typical workflow for laser projection. Most cases, the data is effectively extracted from the CAD model. So you can see on the left-hand side there, we've got a little slide of this little bracket, a weld bracket, and effectively the surfaces are selected within either the OEM software. So if, you, if companies are using, and the big OEMs typically use, uh, let's say the Dassault Cater or the Siemens NX, they actually have modules built within those softwares to export the, the projection dometry directly to Vertec. Um, if you're not using those systems, uh, uh, Vertec has its own, what we call the PDC software, and that allows you to import the CAD model, select the features you'd like to project, and then effectively that the Vertec is ready to start projecting. Now, you probably think, well, that's great, but how does it know where the projector is in relation to the tool? So yeah, that's the only other bit of information the laser projector needs is and what we call an alignment. And the way it aligns itself to the tool is through using a, six, a minimum six uh, retroflective targets. Now they are typically predefined on the CAD in terms of nominal position, or if they're unknown, you can use any metrology device to very quickly understand the positions of those targets relative to your CAD corner system, and then you're projecting straight away. So a lot of the times with the aerospace and the tooling uh, setups, those are already designed into the tool. So again, that is a very seamless process. But in terms of CAD to project, Effectively, it is as simple as selecting the CAD. And I'll show a video to, to prove that. Um, you're selecting the surfaces uh, within the software environment, and Vertec will instantly project the outline or the shape that you want to project. Uh, and you can see the process there. So if 
I go into this video here, I'll carry on sort of yapping away here while this video is running. Uh, and what you'll see is the Vertec in action. So we've got a Sigman typical welding fabrication tables. You saw the flash there and instantly it projects what would have been defined as where this bracket needs to be. So what we're seeing here now is a fixture being assembled. Uh, and in terms of CAD to project, there's two options with Vertec is either you can create the program offline first and the operator will just literally run through the process uh, during the assembly or we've got something called pick and project that is effectively just a direct click on the surface to instant projection and if I haven't touched on it already if you're interested the way the actual projectors work it's quite straightforward it's two mirrors guiding a single laser beam very quickly and it's such a, a such a high frequency it looks like a still image and the operator is uses that as effectively as a guide and you can see that closely there so yeah accurate projection this is another application here where where the sort of components need to be assembled as a center line uh ready to be tackle welded so you've got that right first time and no rework but what, what i was touching on beforehand was a process of how simple it is to go from the cad environment directly back onto the tool when it comes to um, fixed fixture building, it's it's one of those things. It's it can be quite a costly exercise. And imagine, you know, if you're thinking about, I know you're from a an automotive background. I won't say who, um, but you know, you think of all the the potential fixtures that had to be made, um, singular use fixtures um, for for yeah. parts and for inspection and and um, for fabrication for um, automotive and you think about the the cost involved with that actually having having the flexibility to to build your fixture based off your your CAD model and then reuse your table later is is quite a significant cost saving but um, also I think the the thing that's struck me with that video is when you look at that bracket being um, installed on the on the on the box section there there's there's always a, a chance if you're a, a, an operator who's not designed the part you're just the guy who's a fa you know fabricating it is that you put that bracket bracket upside down or uh, in the wrong position or, or something like that um uh, and that's where you start to see those i guess costly errors come later from from users just not knowing how the the part is actually put together properly and making a mistake where i think that's where the vertex can play a, a big role in stopping uh, unexpected or unavoided errors um, with the operators. So yeah, yeah, it's a, it's a good point because although we you know we've sort of I've sort of mentioned you know that sort of high volume manufacturing you really get to see the benefits with high volume manufacturing, but actually the way the Vertec is so simple to use, you can see from there even for prototype and one off builds uh, and sort of development work, it's a, it's a it's a valuable aid. It's an invaluable aid. Um, because if there's any subtle design changes, you're not having to redesign in fixturing, you're effectively re-importing in the CAD and then projecting the new features yeah. back. Yeah. So it's not just a, a, a volume tool, it's actually a perfect guide uh, to, to, as a tool to use during development work as well. Yeah, good point. Um, on the welding side, yes, we've got a real case example here. So Komatsu, uh, you would have heard a very large uh, sort of yellow goods, uh, heavy goods manufacturer. Uh, this is from Komatsu, the USA team. So they've adopted uh, Vertec many years ago. The case studies I've actually got available offline as well, so we can share those. Uh, but just a couple of snippets, really, are the highlights of what the issues they had in-house and, and, the, and the effects of introducing laser projection. So it sounds like, you know, everything I've mentioned on the first few slides, but this is effectively what they, these were their sort of main challenges. Um, yeah, and you can appreciate the number of components, uh, the, the assembly on this, um, and what the, the the resolve any single rework would have been to imagine to sort of rework a, a fabrication at the end of line. So, yeah, they introduced Versa laser projection into the bills. We've got a video uh, that's available on the internet, but I'll just a couple of snapshots really. Those were the sort of effects that they felt uh, that they uh, had, took advantage of. Uh, straight after or soon after the laser projection was introduced so literally 95 percent rejection rate um cost savings quite obvious and yet decrease from the from eight weeks to 16 hours and that echoes that the point about engineering design changes that can be literally immediately uh, sort of uh, re-evaluated and sort of reworked as well 
Yeah. So yeah. I mean, those, those those numbers are huge, match. Like you, yeah. you, yeah, I, I, <laughs> I haven't seen these numbers before, so for me, it's a, yeah. it's a new one. But um, ninety-five percent defects rejected in the SMD decreased by, in six months period. It's not even like the the ROI is 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 taking years to come through. The effects of the vertex laser projector being utilized in a, in the right way for the right application um, is significant. I mean, eight weeks to sixteen hours. It is. It is bonkers, it's, isn't it? It's bonkers, yeah. mate. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And these, and these are numbers from the uh, from the, the team as well. So you can see, and, I, and you can appreciate, it just needs one one bracket to be slightly misaligned when welded, and then by the end, by the time you get to the end of the line, you're going to get significant assembly issues, and it's a total reject. And yeah, those and, costs, and yeah, huge cost. And, and being from a metal fabrication background, when you think about a bracket being welded wrong and then it goes through paint and then by the time you get to end of line and you find it's in the wrong position you know that's a that's a grinding off process that's a that's a rework process it's got to go through paint shop again it's got to be reassembled um in some cases probably easier just to make a new one and <laughs> just put a new one on you know um so yeah I, I can understand those numbers being the way they are um yeah very significant and that's something we talked about didn't we for this webinar was this week was looking at real examples that you know, we can talk about the benefits of the system as as until we're blue in the face, but actually having uh, examples like Komatsu where you've got some real data behind it and how it's changed the business is um, is probably the most powerful message we can we can talk about today. So yeah, look looking forward to the rest of it. Keep going, mate. Thanks, Derek. Okay, so we sort of touched on fixture build. So here's a case study straight away. So the, the previous video you saw uh, some part of a fixture being built and then obviously that the actual part being welded. Uh, but here's an example, actually one of our own. So we have we are also, Derek's mentioned partners for a career form. Uh, we have a demo system of what we call the Q bar. And this is effectively a full inspection cell with a robot on a turntable. Now, it's a demo station for us. And so we have a high number of components that we demonstrate to prospects. So we've got examples of sheet metal, uh, welding, depending on the prospect and the customer, we will have a component that we can demonstrate as a, as a standard demo. Now, previously, what we've had to do is to have all our fixturing noted down um, on, on sort of on, on 2D prints and images and photographs, because if a customer rings up the week before, say we'd love to have a demonstration. We are, we do sheet metal. We've got to very quickly get a changeover on this, this sort of turntable. So what you're seeing this video here now is, um, yeah, our own Q bar being assembled. So we've got the six targets on their reflective, and then in the CAD, which you saw as I started to talk, I'm projecting first of all where the first bracket needs to be. So this is an example of an offline program, okay? So we've already written the program offline. We, we, run the order, we run it in the order of assembly. And what you're seeing there is a, a sort of digital uh, work surface menu. So we're able to very quickly just go through each step of the instructions being projected onto the surface as well. Uh, and then, hey presto we've actually got the full fixture there but you can see the idea we've got a couple of examples of how it works but it's very straightforward that's quite a complex fixture actually if you think about the part itself so this is a sheet metal example uh knowing that we've got the fixture in straight away this video just finishes off really on the scanning side as well so we get to see the whole process uh what you're seeing there is what we call photogrammetry whenever we put a brand new component on the tool uh, the career form needs to just re-detect its own target. So this is now the career form part of the video where we are now going to scan the components. Yeah, that's just now tracking the targets ready for its own program. So yeah, process is now ready. The fixture has been built. Uh, we've we've tracked the targets for the scanner and now the part just scans the components. So yeah, th this video shows obviously the application for the fixture build. But I just wanted to show uh, the complete process. But this is our own challenge. Before we had the vertex, we'd have to run around <laughs> and make sure. So, it normally used to get the ruler out to decide which length should have been screwed, and then we find out afterwards. But, and and it and it's not just a, we're also starting to see, especially in the automotive side, I'm starting to have a lot of conversations about what we call modular fixturing. So they're heading towards, especially with the rise of additive manufacturing in the fixturing business as well. So, 
with the benefits of additive and modular fixturing, this lends itself even more very quickly. You can mm. build a main sort of uh, sort of base fixture and use that main base fixture um, to very quickly change over between different parts. And a lot of companies are starting to do that anyway, instead of having one fixture for each component. So that's, that's, a, that's a separate drive in the industry to reduce costs anyway, but we're just able to streamline the, the assembly on that. Yeah, I've been at the back end of that um, fixture build, trying to 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 build it and look at the A4 <laughs> notes yeah, that exactly. uh, one of our colleagues had written down, saying you need to put this part there and that part there, and needs that cylinder, etc. So, uh, yeah, uh, yeah. Uh, I can imagine this being really helpful if I was a kid with my, my Meccano set. <laughs> it would have been yeah. uh, made life a lot easier, wouldn't it? So, uh, exactly. Yeah, so great video. Great video. Thanks, yeah. So I just wanted to touch on that. So what you saw there, we obviously with uh, a lot of the fixturing companies, like the Freeman tables that you saw, they will have the CAD. So you can literally import all the fixturing. It's a single click here. I'm just adding some text here. And that's my program ready. And if there was a change of CAD, you can just re-import the CAD and bring that in. Very straightforward. Yeah. Okay, so I'm gonna touch on probably the last sort of workflow that we wanted to talk about today. And this is um, this is using the laser projection, not for all these applications that we've just discussed, but actually bridging it and bringing it closer into the workflow for inspection. So we sort of coined a phrase, really. We're calling it scan, analyze, and project. And what we're doing here is actually using it as a sort of an inspection tool, an in-process inspection tool. And that is what we've demonstrating here is the ability to link the laser projector uh, with an inspection software with your scanning or probing device and once we've processed the sort of measurement results we can automatically get the laser projector to project back the deviations okay so it will make more sense when I sort of go through a couple of examples here so we've we've had some good interest on this so we're working um, with uh, in the UK, 3D scanners, so they are the Polyworks resellers uh, uh, inspection software. So what we're saying here is we can utilize that software, any scanning device. Uh, the example I'm showing is obviously with Creoform, but any scanning device that is supported in Polyworks, we can create a, a sort of generate the standard color map and then project uh, the deviations back. So examples are yeah castings so fettling on castings i've got a case study here uh detection of paint surface defects ndt uh sheet metal applications composites uh, uh defects anything where the operator ne needs to see uh, the deviations live on the tool where then might need to mark out for an additional rework this is ideal because typically up to now you're ref you're referring to the actual the inspection report now everything i've just said i can we can run through this video so what you're going to see here when i press play is the workflow it's been shortened we've got a full length video that's been released last week which shows it in very detail but what i want to do is just explain what we, what's happening here so this is a cray four metro scan uh very fast scanner as you can see so we're scanning this door panel it's obviously got some damage on there and once this door gets finished scanning, the video is a bit longer, but rather you see the whole process and not just me do, doing two clicks. So this is now Polyworks. Okay, so the scan data will come into Polyworks as standard. Um, we're just going to do a bit of cleaning up here. As you can see, this all it's all live data. Nothing's all been cleaned up. Then we're going to carry out a standard alignment. So in this case, it's a best fit, but depending on the application, you would run suitable alignment it could be a geometric alignment but we are aligning the measurement to the CAD what we effectively do now which is the, this is the clever but well it's not clever it's, it's standard is we run a sort of surface deviation or a heat or a color map as people tend to know them by the colors that you see on the screen are based on the requirements so in this case the color map was defined the range was defined as a plus or minus I think it was plus or minus 0 0.2 just to highlight all the colors on that screen. Now, what happened very quickly then was there was a macro that traced the curves around that color map and automatically sent it to the laser projector. So where I spoke previously, where we can export the projection data from the CAD system, what we've done here is 
export the projection data from the color map straight into into uh, the iris software which is the projection software uh, and that's what, what what you saw there okay so hopefully that sort of gives you some some indication of is, is it, it's a, it's just a simple macro there's nothing clever here really in terms of how it's been set up it, it, it's it, it's just bringing those two technologies together and giving an opportunity here to use it in a in a different way so the other the other workflow that we're showing here i'll just forward let me have a quick look so what this video was was three workflows uh because we've had different conversations the first one you saw was the classic color map project back the deviations second option here is to maybe use probing so we can use the vertex as a guide to where to probe so what you're seeing now is standard points within the software being projected onto the surface so if you can imagine a very large tool and the operator just needs to measure some key target points um, this will actually project exactly where that needs to be uh, measured okay so uh, that so it's a perfect laser guidance obviously in coupled with polyworks that's got the laser guidance option anyway so that was uh, the second workflow that you're seeing there running live and then the third workflow you will see shortly is back to scanning again. And this is a great one. This is effectively, again, extracting key points. So let's say there's a grid of points on a large component, uh, strategic X, Y, Z positions. We can extract those from the color map. And what's happening here is Polyworks will automatically project back the points onto the surface that are out of tolerance. But what you get in this example here is not just where the position is, but you also get a deviation reading on the surface as well. So again, you can imagine larger comp or complex components where we are projecting that information on the tool, which can be then marked out for additional rework. So it's jumping into the inspection process and sort of supporting that and to, to, to make it make that even that more efficient. But, yeah, but using an accurate laser projector with your inspection metrology device. I think it's, this goes back to, to something we were talking about, about earlier, sort of the manual side of any sort of process and, and inspection is one of those manual processes, you know, from, from guiding where you need to put the, the probe tip to take your measurement points through to um, taking your scan data in and back projecting it. Um, I think one of the things that, when we when we sat down and started working through this process that was quite significant is there there is no other solution like it on the market in terms of real accurate back projection of the contours of where the deviations uh, are occur and you know you get the you know we're starting to see the adoption of um, uh, augmented reality type things coming through um, and you know they can back project a when I say back project you can see it through through goggles a color map on the part but that doesn't that's not necessarily accurate if that makes sense I think what what we're what we're talking about here is very very accurate back projection onto the physical surface of the part so when it comes to to reworks and i know you have a really great example of a casting um, case study that you'll talk through is that it, it's quite significant the fact that the area that you're reworking based on the laser projector you know is going to be accurate it's not just it's based off a of metrology alignment um and and that's really really significant um but i'll i'm going to shut up now i'm going to let you talk about this bit because this is a really exciting use case that you've come across recently um, on large castings and uh, yeah. I think it really tells the story of what's possible. No, no, exactly. And you're right, there's a, there's a, there's some great applications that use live color projection map and, it, and and they have their place, of course they do. You know, it gives you an instant uh, feedback of where your main issues are. But if you need to use that information accurately for the next process, then I think that's where laser projection has its own use case here. And, and the, we, we've got an example here. So uh, very large castings, uh, you probably make out it's like a large volute. So the typical process is the, these castings, obviously once they're cast, the main features will be machined. However, before these uh, castings are shipped, they need to ensure that there's no excess material um, prior to shipping. That's down to the assembly uh, at the process at the end. So um the, the the current process is and i've <clears throat> spoken to a number of companies is yes they will have a typically metrology device 
to interrogate the scan. So they will scan or probe, they will measure back to the CAD data. Uh, and then effectively what they're doing is they will have an inspection report with a couple of screenshots, just like what I've got here. And they will feed that back to the Fettling team. Now, they will obviously have a look at this inspection report, turn around and see this 10 meter casting, and then trying to work out and relay where that area is in relation to exactly where it should be on the casting. Now, this process can take days, if not weeks, of back and forth between this is the area that's identified as um, too much material. Please go away and grind it down. It will get then sent back to the inspection team. They will rescan it to say you need to do a bit more. So that process can go back and forth. So the example that we had here was what you're seeing there are three screenshots first. So using that same process that I showed before uh, is first screenshot is a scan of the component. Overlay it with a CAD. That is as normal. And then the color map that we wanted to identify was any material above zero. So that's identified by that red area there. So what we were able to do literally, I'd say within 20 minutes, and most of that was the scanning time because it's a large casting. Uh, what we did there was we scanned the component, ran it through the macro within Polyworks. And then literally within 20 seconds, Vertec was projecting that area back onto the casting or where it needs to be. So that's your red contour that you saw there. Interestingly, they did they did say, well, actually, where you see that before is that's where we thought it should have been, but it wasn't. So you can see the sort of deviation difference between where we're saying it should be fettled down and not. Um, so yeah, that's a good example. We we've had a couple of interesting conversations. So that is something, uh, and also with uh, sort of marine turbine blades where they need to ensure the cast has to be perfect. You can't have too much weight in certain parts of the castings because obviously as a propeller, you need to be wary of the balancing effect. So again, you need to have a good control on the material on casting. So again, we're able to do a quick color map and just show where the high low points were so they can be reworked later. Um, so this this was quite a, a significant. I remember you doing this demonstration, Madge. Um, and I, uh, there were two things that kind of struck me when you were talking about it. The, the, the first one is is the sort of backwards and forwards between quality and and production. So production doing the linishing process and the grinding down process, and then you got quality who are doing the measuring and saying, uh, "No, you need to do some more." <laughs> and you can imagine moving this part around. Uh, 10 meters and x amount of tons is 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 a a very time consuming thing put it that way uh, and going backwards and forwards and one of the things that uh, vertex doing in this uh, particular example is that it's bringing a really nice blend between quality and manufacture it's actually bringing them together at a much more closer um um let's just call it working together more closely and i think one of our suggestions for this particular customer was to actually put a vertex system inside the bay where some of that grinding takes place and yep. and, and a scanner um so you know you do your you do your your uh, surface removal you scan it again check reproject and it's a fully automated process so you can you can make that work for really smooth um and get to the point where you're not back projecting anything more meaning you you know your 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 part is and surfaces in the the correct height, um, so that was one of the key things. And I, the other thing I remember from this example is is that there was almost a, a disbelief that they got the linishing process wrong. I don't know if you remember that, but they there was like I can't be in that position because it looks like this on the picture when they did it. And um, we ran through a, a, a second example, didn't we, where we actually put some a uh, bit of plasticine or something like that on the surface, and then you scan that. Is that right? I think that's it was. Yeah, it, 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 yeah. It's just to just to imitate some new material on, scanned it, and yeah. it showed it obviously as a red, as a as red a, area. As a red area. It's like I the remember cut, that yeah. picture, plasticine and the laser projector perfectly around the the area where that yeah. additional material had been, and so it was almost a bit of an eye opener of the current process works, but it still brings in a user operator error. Uh, you know the fact that they'd actually gone and taken the wrong material of the wrong position on on the flute, which was like, ah, okay, this is something very very important. And 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 for these kind of castings, I mean, you you if you get a 
a, a scrap return on one of these it's it's a significant amount of money isn't it you're talking tens of thousands so yeah it's um, a complete it's a complete yeah. scrap the whole the whole casting is a complete scrap so yeah, yeah a good example I obviously can't share details of the of the customer but yeah we've Vertec also have utilized this on in on an automotive end of line paint inspection so again quickly but that's a complete eight automated cell uh, where you can automatically scan and then project defects on the paint on the bodywork so so yeah some some good scope here and again the vertex lends itself one because it's um large volume projector um it's accurate and and i'll come to that on my next my final slides there is how you can actually configure those um for more bespoke and sort of sort of sort of complex setups as well and not your traditional where we see in, in aerospace you'll see a lot of the projectors uh, or, or any clean room you'll see the projectors on a roof on a tripod in a fixed cell but this example and the ones i'll show you next is um, it allows us to be flexible and use the projector as a bit like a mobile solution really um, and that's really our sort of sort of come to next so <clears throat> myself and derek have touched on this so vertec that the sort of a VPS, the vision positioning system, and that's what the Vertec 3D projector is called. And the way that it works is you've, you might've seen in the videos, obviously, you've got the laser source in the middle, but you've got two optical cameras. Now, what that allows us to do as a you know, very unique feature here is allow for instant alignment. And the best way I could demonstrate this is this video here, we're back on our sort of demo cell uh, in, in Derby in the UK. Uh, that flash effectively aligned the car. So we've got these retroflective targets on this, on this on this wind tunnel model. But what I'm trying to demonstrate here is, if you can imagine me having a, a projector being moved between workstations, I'm basically recreating that by using that return table. One, because it looks cool, and secondly, it's a good way to show it. What you yeah. saw affected there was the vehicle rotate 90 degrees and the Vertec instantly project features within the program. Now that could have me been me walking around the vehicle or walking to another station. But the point there is what we're trying to show in, in a single video is one, how quickly it aligns, how flexible it is, um, and, and how poor. So that's great for a couple of reasons. So one, it's not just a speed and alignment. If you're using a single system, it, ultimately it is a line of sight projector. Okay, so the features cannot be seen or if it's blocked by another feature, it will we obviously won't go through the surface. What this flexibility allows us is to move the projector uh, small small stages or large, and it will literally reproject again. So you can get around line of sight issues very quickly. Um, the, the way the projectors work, field of view is like a 60 degree cone. So if I'm five meters away from the surface, uh, it's a five by five meter square area. Um, which is, as you can appreciate, a very large area. Most applications cover. Uh, the Vertec can be, I'll run that video again while I'm just um, finishing off in terms of the setup. So that's as a single unit, but a lot of the times, a lot of customers do, you can add as many projectors as you want to the same session, okay? So what that means is, if you've got two uh, sort of line of sight feet, you've got one complete feature being projected uh, between different angles you can connect projectors and they will automatically tie up into the same projection so it will auto clip and what you will see is a single projection i suppose the best example i can give there is if you look at the large for example aerospace tools a large convex sort of uh, mole tools you'll have a projector on either side but you'll have one large ply being laid down and you see it as a single sort of projection Hmm. Um, but that, yeah, just to show that you can connect as many as you want to extend your field of view, to extend line of sight, but the system also lends itself to be portable. So you can get around and get productive straight away with this single projector, which shows it is scalable. It can go, it can always grow uh, with your business in terms of what the application is, obviously. But yeah, so that was just a, because I hopefully got the idea of what that's actually doing and not just an F1 car spinning around. Um, yeah. Yeah. Although it's a, although it's a cool video, yeah, I think uh, yeah, is, yeah. Um, uh, yeah, I think the key thing if you if you're not sure about what the targets are doing, obviously that it's been used to snap on and align. But if you think of it as a a, a GPS system, 
Um, as soon as it sees three targets, it's able to triangulate and it knows exactly where it is um, based on the coordinates and what it's seen on the on the, on the the imaging of the targets. Um, I think one of the words you mentioned there was um, scale up, Madge. I think that's, that's yeah. an important bit, isn't it? I think, you know, uh, people look at the technology, think, oh, this is a significant investment. Actually, the scaling up side of it for adding additional cameras as you go is really very very cost effective in fact it kind of shocked me when i saw the the pricing for what additional cameras cost um and i think that's quite important is your initial uh, your sort of initial outlay on the on the system whether that's on finance or capex or whatever the case is is one price but as you go through the years and we see this all the time with everybody who buys Vertec is it starts with one and it ends with 10 plus systems. Um, and, and that's just because it can be used um, in so many different ways and so many different applications and it requires a manual process. But specifically things like with composite layer, um, you know, you'll, you'll, you'll find that one system there's a few tables and then as the business grows, they need an additional camera. They just add another one on. It's not like it's, um, it's it's a it's a huge uh, outlay of cash to be able to just scale up the the projection side of it. So that's quite important. Um, but yeah, in terms of size, volume, mounting, um, you know, we for us MSL it works great on a, a tripod system as you see in the the image there. But we do have a lot of customers who ceiling mount these things, don't they, Madge? Um, that's right. You know, keep them out the way. Um, maintenance is it is minimal, if any. You know, they pretty much just run themselves. Um, and if there is anything that needs replacing, we have in-field replacements um, and parts for the for the system. So you're never sending your unit back um, to to Vertec. Uh, it can get repaired on site. So um, a, a very versatile. Um, reliable is probably the best word for it in terms of a production tool. Now some good points there, Derek. Thanks for thanks for that. Yeah, um, yeah, brilliant. So, Alex, the, 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 I, I pause the video there briefly. So, you've, you, what you'll see there is an image of the projector continuously projecting. So, what you saw before with the the instant alignment is what we call flash align. Uh, there's also a, a sort of feature within the Vertex that allows you to do real time projection. So, what the last part of this video shows a projection while the actual object is moving. So you'll see that shortly with a wording called um, active track. But this is great for, as you can see there, so if you have a potential production line, the projector will continuously project real time onto the surface at all. So yeah, if you can imagine like a slow moving line where an item is being assembled, the Verta can actually support a sort of dynamic process there as well. So yeah, very, very sort of, quite advanced feature that is but yeah available within the vertex um uh, as uh, known as active track brilliant well thanks much for putting that together i think it's been hopefully a really informative um webinar for anyone who's been looking into vertex so um we're, we're going to round up there um there is a bit of time for questions if anybody would like to hang in there and and drop us a a question on the chat function um and we'd be happy happy to answer that. We have had one so far. So someone had asked about uh, recording of the webinar. Um, yep, this is this is being recorded, um, and so it will be available for anybody who would like a copy of it. If you want to share it with colleagues or um, business partners, etc., or, or, or anyone who you think might be interested in it, we're more than happy to send across um, a, a download link for it, and um, you'd be welcome to 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 share that across. Um, likewise, um, if if you've not followed us on our social media platforms or anything like that on LinkedIn, um, I'd highly recommend it. Highly recommend it. Um, one of the videos you saw there was uh, a collaboration between 3D scanners and um, MSL measurement solutions, and um, that was posted out a, a week or so ago. It's uh, I'm just trying to think how long it is, Matt. It's about 15 minutes, isn't it? It's, um, yeah. It's a, it's a really yeah it's a really nice technical video that explains that back projection process in in quite a significant amount of detail but um it's all real time and so you'll be able to see the scanning through to the color mapping back projection pro point um, um alignments etc so very very good video to watch and that can be found on our social media platform or you can have a look at our, our website we have a 
uh, an MSL TV page, and, uh, which shows a lot of our videos and case studies that we do with customers. And so that would be uh, a great place to, to get some more information from us. Um, Madge, thanks very much for your time, mate. I appreciate it. I know you're a busy man, so. Um, uh, no, no, thanks, uh, Derek. Great thank you very this. much. And thank you everyone for joining. I really appreciate your time. Brilliant. See you guys soon. Take care. Thank you. Bye-bye.